Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to our November uh, SLA CID webinar. This is one of our monthly uh, webinar series. And today we have one of the most uh, sought out uh, duos in, in the uh, uh, CI uh, world, um, providing us with a 2020 intelligence insights um, what's now, what's next, and what can you do? So it's a great overview of uh, what the, the future lies ahead on, on CI. Um, just before we get started here today, I just wanna just to uh, thank our sponsor, Aurora WDC. Um, and they've been a proud sponsor of our webinars for many years. And uh, because of this, they wanna give everyone on our today's webinar an early opportunity to explore their reconverge G2 uh, 2019 agenda and make plans to attend next year uh, in April. Uh, if you've never been to a Reconverge G2 event, this is an annual symposium uh, which brings together the smartest intelligence and information professionals into a close-knit interactive experience in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, this year's theme is a call to action uh, for information intelligence professionals, the smart growth imperative. Uh, You'll spend four days working with your colleagues, building and rebuilding your information management skills uh, to work on real business and client problems and drive the most important goal for any organization, which is growth. Uh, so for only $95, you can lock in an early registration rate for you and your entire team. So if you visit www.reconverge.net, uh, check out the agenda and get registered. So it's a great opportunity for everyone listening to this uh, webinar to take advantage of this. So as I said early, earlier, the most uh, very sought out after a duo in um, CI, and we've had them do this presentation previously last year, and as well as at our conference in uh, Baltimore in 2018. In G and, uh, introduce you to Cynthia Chang Korea, who is the president of the uh, CI Fellows and also the managing director of Knowledge Inform, which is a competitive and commercial intelligence consultancy. And presenting with Cynthia today is Dr. Craig Fleischer, who is the vice president of the uh, CI Fellows, and he is also the chief learning officer at Aurora WDC. And, uh, Craig is a widely published author, and he's written some of the sort of most important books in, in CI. So it's great to have the two of you here today. So with that, uh, I look forward to your chat. Thanks so much, Jim, and thank you very much, SLA CID and the leadership for, for having us. Uh, we're, we're pleased as, as part of the Council of Competitive Intelligence Fellows to be working with you as we always are. And, uh, and, and a quick note about who we are. Uh, we are an uh, organization of, uh, of, of uh, uh, thought leaders within the, uh, within, <clears throat> excuse me, the CI space, and we are in service to the profession and to the professional and who are practicing CI you know, as ambassadors, champions, mentors, and educators. You know, we're here to support CI practices in its various dimensions. And so for today, um, according to Jim's um, introduction, well, we've done this before. Some of you may remember that we, have, we were here uh, last year um, in, the same, uh, in, the, in the same time um, talking about a rather similar theme. So it may seem like deja vu and it may seem maybe a little bit repetitive. And for those of you who are also at the SLA uh, conference in June, uh, when we had also a similar theme, well, this is because this is a very large topic. And this, when we're, we're confronting within the CI practice, you know, tremendous questions about what's now, what's next, what to do, where are we going and how are we going to get there? And so we want to start with some of these broad key questions that you see on the screen. What is the state of CI? Where is CI headed? What is your specific vision for CI? And also what is our collective vision for CI? And then specifically what can we do to keep ahead or even shape CI? And so we'll want to keep in mind these questions as in, through our discussion today and beyond, because one of the things that Craig and I want to underscore is that this is not just 
a conversation that we have periodically. This is something we need to be thinking about. And one of the one of the, the, the key aspects of this is, it's not something we also think about just now or at a key point. But we have to think about this through the rest of our careers because this because our our practices as intelligence professionals are affected by so many different dynamics. And so it's important to underscore that this is a continuation of the discussions we've been having online and offline with various related groups and among various colleagues. And so you can see here that with the council, we discuss this and constantly and also you know, at our annual meeting, with, which we just held, in which we do a deeper dive. We've certainly done this with the CI division and hopefully we'll be doing this again in June. We've been, we've also worked with Skip Europe and, and discussed it with the, with that group as well, and we'll continue to do so. And so here, what we want to do today is to really look at the the, the following the, the following questions, as well as the, the those that are affecting your own practices. Um, so so please think about things that are affecting you, questions that you've been confronting, and please use the chat box liberally. Um, we'll be monitoring that for sure, and uh, we'll also be asking you at the end to post some of your thoughts uh, about what we've discussed today. And so we'll drill down more deeply about the current and future states of CI and how to prepare from the standpoint of CI division members, since we're all gathered here today, as well as others who are often charged with research, knowledge management, and various aspects of analysis. So to start, let's get your perspective. And so we'll have a poll here opened up for you. If you can just register your thoughts, And then we'll just dive right into it with Craig. So in the next decade, competitive intelligence will, do you think it's still gonna be growing or expanding within organizations and in industries? Will it hit the high water mark, or has it hit the high water mark, and decline in influence as a business practice? Will it be integrated and embedded in various organizational functions? Or is it kind of too hard to tell where it's at or where it's going? What do you all think? I see we have a lot of people already voting, Cynthia, and that's a good sign. And um, unsurprisingly, a little bit to me, I have, most of the votes are actually going towards one of these four. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if it was one that you might have expected. Um, it, I think it is one I was kind of expecting. So maybe, maybe just maybe what we're seeing, you know, globally and some of the trends that we've seen historically um, might actually be uh, being observed by some of the folks on our, on our webinar today. Mm -hmm. So just give me a, a few more seconds to uh, vote. We're almost at uh, 80%, so that's great. And thanks everyone for voting. I see virtually most of you have done so, and we certainly, you know, we certainly appreciate that. Um, and this is a question, by the way, that we've been trying to understand uh, for decades now, literally going back to the 1980s, um, even under Skip, we started a number of different uh, research efforts that were designed to kind of survey the field. Uh, literally goes back to 1986 when Skip began. Uh, it was shortly thereafter they started their first of those so-called uh, landscape studies, and uh, even that one asked some of these same questions. You know, was this a growth field or wasn't it? Uh, was it going to be independent or not? And uh, you guys have come and answered it with a pretty strong view about, you know, six out of 10 of you think that it will be integrated and embedded in, in various organizational functions. Uh, about most of the remaining group of you think it will continue to be uh, growing and expanding, possibly more on its own two legs within, you know, organizations and industries. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's an interesting view. It's one that I think a lot of people share out there. Um, many of you probably are in integrated or are embedded in, in other functions, especially for those of uh, you and those of us in the uh, information and you know, library and information uh, specialty areas. Um, you have probably long been you know, a critical and integral component of, of various areas. And actually CI itself historically um, has shown up in one of two places more than anywhere else. Number one, it shows up more in marketing in general than any other function. And the second area it tends to show up most within is strategy. So either it shows up within those or it reports through them. 
towards top management. Cynthia, your you know your sense of um, especially within the you know the SLA community, um, what's been your sense of the trend? Well, I, I think with SLA, where we see that there it, it's really more embedded. I think there are more folks you know who are who have competitive intelligence as a part of their function. And uh, you know, so, so it really hasn't peaked in, in, in any sense of that word. Um, it's really just shifted. And, and I think that that's reflective of the overall CI practice, um, in, in, in my perspective, where we don't really see as many CI departments, you know, for example, as, or centralized functions as we do. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, but we do see more folks in, in other areas, uh, in other specialties, other functions who are, who are incorporating competitive intelligence into their work. You know, and it reminds me too of an issue that I think we've long held in this field, and I think some of you continue to struggle with it. I know I do with uh, some of the folks that I work with. You know, it's it's about the lingua franca, Ling, lingua franca. I didn't say that real well there, but it's what we call ourselves. And you know, there there have been uh, a number of attempts uh, to to redefine what competitive or market or business intelligence, however you might choose to define it, really is. You know, both on the you know, the, the, the first word, whether we're talking about competitive or not, and, and on the second word, uh, intelligence. And, and you know, is, is that the right word? Is that the appropriate word? Is that the relevant word for, you know, the particular context within which it's applied? And that's been a, you know, an, an area of conversation that I suspect will continue to go on in the, in the years to come. And, you know, may, maybe someday we'll call it something else. Um, you may mean the same things. We may be doing, you know, much of what we're already doing today, but, um, but but see it actually defined in a different manner, and and in doing so, uh, might be able to communicate what we do and the benefits that we generate to the public maybe a little more easily than we've managed to do over the you know last three or four decades, particularly in the U.S. But now I'd argue that's true in a number of other countries as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, and uh, so I see that uh, that the see that the uh, polls are still open. So if you can just bear with me here. Um, we can move on to uh, the next screen. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Terrific. Yeah. So, so, so let, let's 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 uh, focus our discussion now to you know what is the future? Um, you know what will the future look like uh, in terms of our research practices? What will it look like in terms of analysis or CI knowledge management? Um, and, and by extension, will CI even be a viable career path in 2020, or how should we plan uh, to integrate CI into you know, our work, um, if, if that's something that we're interested in doing? Will it be an independent function at that point? Will it be absorbed? So what do you think, Craig, in terms of these broader questions? And folks, please submit via chat what your, what your perspectives are and your questions as well. Well, I, you know, I'll start with the research angle. You know, the, the good news, I think, for many of us, especially on this webinar, um, the research has been changing um, for, for anybody that's in, you know, information and library science, for example. Um, it's changed dramatically for, for, for those of you over the last couple of decades, and, and it's going to continue to change dramatically. And I think that's true for the CI, you know, practitioner as well. Uh, research continues to be, you know, one of three general natures. So we we always have the primary or the human intelligence part of it. Uh, we've always got the secondary. That's an area that, you know, again, the folks on this particular webinar, you know, certainly have been able to demonstrate and master probably more than most other folks anywhere else in the organization. And, and we've recently added, and and I think we'll continue to see grow, is the the you know the so-called social research part of this. You know, many of you would view that as part of the secondary or primary universe, and that's fine. But it it has tended to take on a nature of its own. So between primary, secondary, and social, um, you know, the the ability to do research among and across all three of those has grown in you know, has grown in uh, need for most organizations, and it's changed dramatically. There are you know, technological barriers, for example, I'm, I'm going to use social as, a, as an example. I, I've just come back from a couple of weeks in China. Um, and for those of you or those of us who have practiced in China, you'll know that uh, it's difficult often to, um, you know, if you're outside trying to get information inside or you're inside trying to get information outside, um, there are barriers to doing that. And, and those barriers can make the, the researcher's job more difficult. 
Uh, and China is certainly not the only example. It's just one I happen to put out there. But you know, when you've got 1.4, 1.5 billion people that are that are you know at least affected by that so-called Great Firewall, it can definitely change how we do our research. It also changes the way that that research evolves. So if if you're a Chinese CI researcher versus let's say a Canadian, a, a UK based, or an American or Mexican one. Uh, your your job is very very different. You're not just using different channels. You're not just using different technologies. But your know, your context is dramatically different. It's path dependent. Uh, and so someone who's you know who maybe a good you know if you're if you're based in Mexico and you do this very well out in your social networks, you know if if you have to all of a sudden do it on a on a Chinese rival or a Chinese prospect, it's uh, it's a whole different ball game. So the research is going to continue to change. Um, it's not just going to be driven by technology, but I think it's going to be driven by these you know, often political or global business uh, driver changes as well. And, you know, we've, if, if we're going to be doing research that's of a value to our clients, we've got to continue to chase those business trends. We've got to be business viable, business relevant, and, you know, frankly, business supportive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if I can also add a, another dimension to the research challenges, you know, of course, we've been grappling with you know, the you know, questions about uh, you know, disinformation, misinformation that's out there, right? the actual fake news that's out there, but also you know, propaganda that's pushing back against that. So for researchers, it's, it becomes much more important, obviously, for us you know, to you know, be able to discern this. And so there's a, an added layer of analysis, or it becomes more, this, this type of analysis becomes even more more um, sophisticated or should be more sophisticated as time goes on because you know basically we've opened this Pandora's box now and so we can see that well, we can expect that propaganda campaigns from various parts of the globe will increase and including domestically and so how do we cut through all of that you know to facts and you know in reality um, and, and 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 unfortunately propaganda is also part of reality nowadays but how do we get what we need or what our, our decision makers need in, in a way that is you know, efficient and effective you know that's going to be a, a tremendous challenge and there's you know, software being developed you know that, that's that's you know aiming at, at, at squarely at, at at these particular issues but we're not there yet and we can bet that people who are engaged in this are going to keep ahead of the software as well. And so we're even seeing now that, um, you know, that with, uh, with uh, you know, videos, um, you know, the famous YouTube video of Barack Obama um, and, um, and, and, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's really not him. <clears throat> it's, it's actually voiced by an actor. Um, and so, um, so but, but to a lot of people, you know, we've, we've made that leap you know, over the unc uncanny valley where, you know, something that is basically digitally generated, um, you know, is, it has, has, has become a, 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 a perceived reality for many people. And this will be a, a, a tremendous challenge, I think, to researchers uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, so how do we prepare for that? Um, how do we prepare our skills you know, so that we can be much more discerning and much better at this level of analysis? Um, you know, not, not just, you know, intelligence analysis, you know, after we've gathered material, right? At the point of gathering the material, how do we know what is usable and what isn't from the standpoint of, of integrity? Boy, that's, you know, it's funny, funny, Cynthia. I was out addressing a group of communication professionals just about a month ago. And it was talking about this so-called concept of truth decay, you know, the idea yeah. that it, it is harder to, to actually, you know, decipher the truth, whatever that is. I mean, it's a concept itself that's under attack. And, you know, certainly for those of us in the intelligence world, um, we've always tried to, you know, try, try to deliver that to, you know, to the so-called powerful, right? It's delivering truth to the powerful and, you know, helping them, you know, helping them address it more constructively. It's, it's harder to be uh, objectively in, empiricist today. You know, and, and for all of our desire and kind of goal of, of being data driven and the rest of that, you know, when that data itself is being manipulated, when that data is, mm -hmm. is bad or it's corroded or it's toxic or any of the other things, uh, and our job is to try to decipher the truth, you know, we, we all of a sudden go from being, again, information specialist to all of a sudden we, we take on a very different role, whether that's, and again, an investigative reporter, uh, you know, again, a muckraking journalist, we take on roles that uh, in reality, um, we've we've talked about or have been so-called adjacent to what we do in the past, but they become more central. Uh, and and you combine that with all of the all of the new data, since everybody's kind of a reporter today. Everybody, 
you know, can circulate a rumor. It's so much more easier. The, the so-called fire hose of information has been, you know, arguably even broadened more. Trying to separate the signal from the noise has become even harder. And it's required us to use what is actually part of the problem. And that's to employ technology in doing that. And technology is, you know, is a multiplier. It's a force multiplier of not only of the truth, but also of, you know, the, of, of those elements that are, that are you know, uh, in, in, in aversion to the truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And actually, I, I, I have more to add, but I want to bookmark that because we have a poll question about technology. And sure. so, uh, so thanks for getting us there. And so we'll, we'll just go to the second poll question you know, as, we, uh, as we move on over, uh, move through our, our topic. So, so let's, let me, let's get your perspective um, about what will be the biggest change drivers for CI practices. So if we could open up that poll. And, uh, and if you can tell us if you see it as you know, being client or user needs, perceptions and practices, are they practitioner growth or changes in their capabilities? Are they technology and tools or perhaps just organizational requirements, what the organization needs? Or is it something else or are you not sure? You know, I, I, have, a, I have a secret hope that people will pick one of these categories that I suspect isn't going to get a lot of attention from our from our webinar. And my hope is that, you know, that the answer that I'm kind of looking for here, which I don't expect to be one of the larger ones, is one that'll demonstrate leadership on the behalf of practitioners in their organizations. Mm -hmm. Now, whether we'll see that or not, I don't know, Cynthia. I'm waiting kind of with bated breath like you. Right. <laughs> You know, and and that's I, I think I think you 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 raise a good point about leadership, and what, what's I think important for people to think about you know, as we continue to build our skills you know, is to balance that broad perspective, right? What we're talking these broader questions we're talking about now, as well as you know various leadership you know types of questions and perspectives, it, with with uh, with with, the, with 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 enough understanding of various areas of specialization that's required to still move things forward so from you know because for intelligence practitioners you know, we're not the end users right so um, you know so so we can't purely take a, a you know broader perspective like the seat suite does but we need to be able to, to walk in their shoes uh, at the same time um, you know, we need to specialize in, in a number of different areas you know according to our organizational needs according to our interests but and also intelligence needs as well and so so I think, you know, in, in, in the future, I think it's, it's going to require even more of that, you know, for us to be able to switch those hats, you know, as we need to, um, you know, to, to, you know, to think like leaders, uh, you know, as, as well as, you know, be able to work like actual practitioners, you know, when, when necessary. Um, and, uh, and so, so I'd like to uh, just kind of throw that out there, you know, for people's consideration for, you know, 2020 and beyond as well. Oh, absolutely. So I, I, I think we're close to the, the end of this. And I think almost about 70 percent voted here. And I'll, if you if you guys are all right, uh, about a third of a third of our respondents have uh, suggested that client and user needs, perceptions and uh, practices was uh, the biggest change driver. And the other third, and this is the one I was expecting to be first. It's tied for first, actually, is technology and tools. Mm -hmm. Um, and and no surprise. And but but the message I think Cynthia was trying to to share, and the one I was kind of hoping um, that that we we'd be able to uh, delve in a little deeper is the second one, and that's the one that nine percent of you answered, which said practitioner growth and changes in capabilities. You know what's happening is is not necessarily uh, something that we have to react to. Uh, there's no reason to think that through SLA and other groups, your own education, your own development, uh, through educators and uh, thought leaders in the field that you can't take charge of the narrative. I mean, there's no reason to think that we as specialists in what we do um, can't be proactive. We can't be interactive as opposed to being reactive. Um, we, we have the ability um, to start um, using, leveraging and expanding the skills that we have now um, that are going to be useful in the future. And, it, and, and I'll just I'll throw a couple of ones out that I think, you know, again, the folks on this webinar in particular um, probably could demonstrate leadership more quickly with, in other words, to take the reins of their careers over the next 10 years and, and, and make a even bigger contribution and influence to their organizations. You know, number one is social intelligence. Uh, this is something we do really good when it comes to social networks, you know, finding people or places or sources amongst those networks. Um, you know, this group is as good as any. Um, we'll continue to be good at that. 
You know, another one, media literacy. Uh, new media literacy is going to be critical for organizations of all types, you know, over the next 10 and certainly beyond years too. Um, having a design mindset, you know, the ability to, you know, represent and develop tasks. I, I can't think of a better group than the one that's on this webinar today um, that can help develop taxonomies that allow for more efficient and effective kind of automated monitoring and scanning of the you know, of the written and, and social universe than you guys. And last but not least, um, you know, I, I always viewed information specialists as being really good at kind of getting to the bottom of the right questions. You know, we, we know how to ask our clients the right kinds of questions to get to the crux of the matter, to, to, to get to the bottom line early. So this ability to virtually collaborate with our with our clients and ultimately also with our sources too on the other side, um, you guys, you guys should be taking leadership on that. And those are skills that future business people are going to value, I think, at a higher level than they are even today. Absolutely. And I just want to mention, too, that uh, the poll is still on. Um, and when the po poll closes, we can go to the next graphic, you know, which, uh, you know, which will, will help guide this, this discussion a little bit. <clears throat> um, let's see. For some reason, I still can't. There we go. <clears throat> and so... To, to your point, Craig, um, you know, I think that, that, that you know, InfoPros in particular, um, you know, we, we, we are we're in a position at, at now and in the future you know, to be able to connect user needs with, with, with solutions. And, and it's, it's going to look differently, though, than, than the, the way it has been, you know, where it's really been more you know, sort of product-oriented. Um, when, when we're talking about the future, we're really talking about a you know, future that may involve intelligent systems, right? Um, you know, that will replace many or most of, you know, the, the tools that we're using. So what are we going to do? And, um, and so here, we need to prepare for that future. We need to understand that many of the maybe more sort of routine, um, you know, sort of simple research tasks will simply be replaced uh, you know, by those systems. And so where does that leave, you know, people who are, you know, pure researchers or maybe more dedicated researchers, you know, do, do we, do we you know, continue to kind of fight that fight? Are we caught off guard? Um, I think that when we're talking about, you know, technology, for example, you know, it, it tends to move slower than, you know, a lot of the early headlines and a lot of early adopters will project. But the thing about technology, too, is it also moves way too quickly for people who are not prepared. And so it's important for us, you know, to guard against that, uh, you know, that, that second phenomenon, because I think it's just better, you know, for us to, you know, to anticipate technology and kind of wait for it to catch up than to be caught off guard. And we did see this actually with um, the, in, in, in the late 1990s and the early aughts among InfoPros and so those of you who have, you know, been with me in this journey. Well, remember that uh, we were, got very excited about uh, you know, various types of search tools without understanding that the user perception will be that the search tools will replace people. Now, of course, we understand that that, you know, that, that didn't make sense, right? It, that really was bad practice. Still didn't stop people from laying off info pros, right? The librarians thinking that they could just now take everything onto Netscape at the time. And we will see this type of phenomenon happening with other new technologies as well. People get very carried away, you know, take things on, and then have to dial back when they realize that maybe they were a little too enthusiastic. So to Craig's point, what do we do as leaders to prevent that sort of thing from happening too much? Um, you know, understanding that, that there will still be an inevitably some people who will not quite understand, um, you know, the message that, that uh, important messages that we'll share. So how will we do, how will we take a leadership role in anticipating that this will happen and to be able to help people understand how to better deploy these tools, our roles within it, and connecting people's needs to various solutions as well, ensuring that there is still oversight from people who are knowledgeable knowledgeable from an information and intelligence standpoint. Hello? Awesome. Did you, could you just uh, advance to the next slide? Oh, yes. Sure. Sorry. Great. Uh, actually, can you, uh, it looks like you can't see my screen. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm so sorry. I, I'm not sure what's happening oh, here. There's Let's... a show screen button at the top if you can just hit that. Okay. There, there we go. There we go. Oh, Great. there we are. Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> And yes, I think when we're toggling between the poles, you know, sometimes this doesn't quite carry over. So, yeah, so 
Um, so with you know, so with with this, um, you know, we just want to be sure that you know we you know can take a holistic view of all of this and not be blindsided, not be ill prepared because we're too slow to recognize some of these changes. So give ourselves enough time to be the leaders that we really should be. Yeah, so so true. And there's there's you know there's so much that we can we can do, and leadership is going to be important. And and I just want to make a special note. There are clearly some some demographic drivers that that have literally underlied every single kind of comment and observation we've shared thus far um, a, a lot of what needs to be done is most likely going to be done by you know some of the newer practitioners some of the more recent practitioners those that have come into the field you know within the last 10 and you know 10 and 12 years it's not by some of the old dinosaurs like myself or, or you, Cynthia, I don't mean to be calling you that, but uh, I know you've been doing this since you were five. So um, you know, <laughs> the, the reality oh, is, <laughs> the reality is some of these new skills, some of these new leadership qualities, um, you know, again, they're gonna come from the newer practitioners. Um, you bring a new perspective, you bring different values, you bring different principles, and you certainly will be bringing different knowledge, you know, into the equation than, than some of the so-called older guard would, you know, would be having, you know, frankly, I'm going to make a funny little argument here because I'm pointing at myself to some degree. Um, you know, I, I, I there, there's a need for some of us in the old guard to, uh, you know, to let you let you be at the table, not only let you be at the table, frankly, we should be inviting you to the table. And I, I kind of use the the illustration of, you know, you, if, if you really want to see how something's going to resonate out in the public today, you know, ask your kid, you know, run it by your kid. If your kid, if your kid gets it, if your kid kind of runs with it, there's a pretty good likelihood it's you know the rest of us are going to run with it. Um, the, the younger generation, in, in all honesty, has a chance to do uh, with this field, and frankly, with the benefits that this field can actually bring to their organizations. I think a lot more than 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 my generation was able to do with it. And we we need you. We need you to step forward into leadership. Um, you know, you need to speak up when you see things that you know can be done better. You 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 have different ways of doing it. And just because it hasn't been tried before doesn't mean that it shouldn't be at the table when, you know, when various options are being looked over. Absolutely. And I, I think that I think that what, what is most powerful um, when we 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 when we're more, more inclusive is when we have folks who are listening, you know, and encouraging you know, the you know, young guard, new guard, up and comers to you know, begin to take leadership roles and you know to begin to help shape the future at the same time you know for the folks who are up and coming to pay attention to history because many things you know, tend to be cyclical and they'll tend to repeat themselves and so i had just referenced you know the the, the um you know the the uh, um it, uh, uh, it, uh, challenges that uh that infopros had faced uh in the late 90s and and during basically during the dot com boom um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, the shift, you know, in, in their roles. And, and so um, that, that's something, you know, when, when it may seem isolated, you know, that's something that we have seen throughout history when we're talking about automation, right? And we're talking about new practices, new technologies, you know, uh, you know coming online and displacing people. Um, and so, so well, you know, the up and, come, up and comers of today, you know, will you know tend to be, you know, the you know, managers and, uh, and and you know, and 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 folks you know, who might get get a little too comfortable, right, of tomorrow. Um, and so I think as uh, so I think for for each generation, we need to keep looking. Well, as we're young, we have to keep you know, looking forward, you know, but also use, you know, experience, uh, you know, from the previous generations as touchstone. And, you know, for those of us, you know, who are you know, further along, you know, to be able to help those who are coming along, you know, to help invigorate and to help, you know, generate, <clears throat> excuse me, getting over a cold, you know, to help, you know, generate, you know, more new, new technology, new perspectives, you know, new energy, you know, into uh, our practices. And I think that that's one of the keys, you know, to CI right now, um, you know, to going back to the poll question, you know, we're talking about, you know, user needs, we're talking about our, you know, specific roles and functions and how we might grow, we're talking about technologies and tools and so forth. And in each of these dimensions, we are in a transition right now. Um, we're, in, we're in a technological transition for sure, you know, um, but we're also in transition in terms of, you know, our own practices, and um, and so so you know, to, un to 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 collaborate, 
intergenerationally, geographically, um, you know, in, in, in various other aspects to diversify our teams is really where the strength is going to be. And it's really going to be where CI teams can begin to shine. Um, you know, despite, you know, all the nationalism that's going on, you know, the globalism requires that. And there's, you know, there's this tremendous amount of research that, that, that drives home the point how important it is for us to have, you know, diversity of opinions diversity of perspectives, you know, to be able to guard against blind spots, to be able to understand, you know, what um, is up and coming, to be able to fill perception, perception gaps within teams and, and when we, within individuals as well. And so while this is non-techie, um, it's, it's an important aspect of practice. There's just a tremendous amount of research in behavioral economics and, and, and cognitive biases, you know, that is highlighting the importance you know, of diversifying of gathering perspectives and uh, and I think it'll strengthen all of us you know as we prepare you know for the various unknowns in, this, in, the, in our futures I like that I like that idea of the, the diversity and inclusion of perspective something that I, 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 I like you think most organizations are going to benefit from in the in the years to come and we're seeing that you know and, and yet we still have this you know this overwhelming kind of you know examination or this this looming cloud of technology and actually if you wouldn't mind Cynthia if we could go to the next poll question and get uh, mm -hmm. get our folks to look at that in a little mm -hmm. more detail I want to I want to touch on some of those technology aspects a little more so if we could open up that poll on how technology yeah. is likely to impact it it'd be nice to get the audience's views of this and uh, we'll start our conversation around that while they're voting if that sounds all right um, but there's no sounds doubt great. So, yeah, so a lot of you know a lot of folks are you know worried about technology. A lot of people are thrilled about the technology. It tends to be, you know, like many things today, it seems to polarize many audiences. You know, those that are fearful and those that are thankful. But having said that, you know, there there is so much that's been happening in technology and um, that that affects our field. Uh, you know, wh whether it's how that technology is actually utilized as part of it, it's you know dealing with its implications as well as learning how to. Um, integrate it into what we do. And, and I'll just give a couple of examples of where I'm coming at from that. Um, you know, for those of you that are not already using, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, what a great opportunity. You know, it's, it's, it's a way of taking, again, you know, torrents of data um, and filtering it in, in ways that just we as human beings cannot do it nearly as efficiently. And when you combine that with the power of something like quantum computing or the ability of, you know, flow through networks that are facilitated by 5G, you know, any of these things can really allow us to, you know, to, to look at, to gather, you know, to make sense of ultimately a lot more data, a lot more quickly in ways that, like I said, literally five or six years ago, we would, you know, we, 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 we wouldn't even have envisioned that, you know, that was kind of Star trek -y, if I could use that kind of terminology. And yet technology is going to replace some of us. Um, so I, I, I have a concept I use in some of my writing. I've been using it for decades, actually. It's called the uh, CI Activity and Automation Index. And really what that says is that there's three kinds of CI activities. There, there's the continuous ones, the ones we do, you know, literally day in and day out, the so-called 24 by 7 ones. Um, and those are the ones, those continuous activities really are um, are going to be the ones that are going to be automated most heavily. So if, if you're doing those kinds of jobs where it's just, you know, rote, it's it, it's all done in algorithms, it's standard operating procedure, and they really don't need people to intervene much on those. And, and it's those that, you know, quote unquote, probably will be replaced by robots. But in our field, as we know, there's also the so-called periodic ones. These are the ones that kind of run by the business calendar and, and and therefore the associated intelligence categories you know it's things like uh, you know checking out the annual reporting of you know of you and your rivals it's you know it's supporting the, the the annual business or strategic planning exercises you know it's making sure that you're you're supporting trade and you know trade events and and, and shows and things like that you know there there's some automation that's going to be employed to do that better and obviously automation will help you do any of those things better but having said that, there's certain things in, in, in each of those that I just mentioned that can't be automated. So, you know, those of you who are supporting those kinds of activities are, are far more likely to keep your jobs or, quote unquote, protect them from the robots. And then there's the last piece that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the so-called occasional ad hoc or, you know, special projects that uh, we, 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 we hopefully frequently get involved in. Those are virtually impossible to automate. Um, and for those of you who do a lot of those so-called, you know, ad hoc, occasional or special projects, um, you're you're far more resilient to being, you know, roboted away into the you know in into the career field. So 
Um, you know, again, it's one way of thinking about what you're doing. And if you think about that as a portfolio right now of what you're doing, and you see that the majority of your, you know, your tasks are actually over in that occasional ad hoc uh, special project side, as opposed to the continuous side, you're 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 going to be, you know, far more likely to, uh, you know, to keep your jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I can't see the I haven't been able to see the the poll results uh, from where I sit. Um, and so uh, so has, so has I, everybody? I've, I've got those up, that? Cynthia. I've you know yeah. actually half half of the folks said that technology will replace research, but analysis will need humans. Another third says uh, it, actually none of the uh, none of the options we had put on there is, is is likely to happen. So they see something different. And by the way, we're going to give mm. you a chance to tell us what you see different here in just a couple of minutes before we finish. Uh, but but the, by far the number one in this was that technology will you know will replace a lot of the research that CI folks are yeah. already doing. But you know for those of us who are also you know doing the research the the analysis task on top of the research, um, that's still a good place for humans to be participating in. Absolutely terrific, thanks. And so I think this this will allow us to get on to um, to close the polls and uh, oops and to get to the next. Um, Slide. Sorry about this. I'm not sure what's happening here. It's the system's getting a little wonky as we're transitioning from uh, from the poll. There we are. <clears throat> yeah. So you know, I I, th I think you you've summarized it you know very very nicely, uh, you know, Craig. I, because I think that you know with um, with intelligence systems, I think it's generally agreed upon that it is going to replace many or most research activities. You know. So what do we do? Do we reskill? Do we upskill? Do we look for new roles before the robots replace us? And and I just want to add that <clears throat> that uh, you know for for folks you know who um, you know are not necessarily squarely in Intel, you know, perhaps uh, you know an accessible model will will be that data information and knowledge pyramid that many of us are, have probably you know burned into our retinas, and you know we see that you know that technology has really taken over the data tier. It's well established in the information creation tier. At the very top of that pyramid <clears throat> is knowledge. And so you know, the question is, you know, how how far um, you know will the technology um, replace you know some of those functions, and uh, how quickly, how soon, right? And uh, but I think what's important for InfoPros to consider is that we shouldn't we we shouldn't settle as consumers of these tools, as um, many of us have been traditionally. Um, you know, to, to Craig's leadership point, that um, I think more of us, you know, should be able to consider ourselves as um, as you know, perhaps you know designers of these systems um, and managers of these systems. And if we're not positioned now at you know, for, you know, towards that, to begin to, to begin <clears throat> developing those skills towards <clears throat> towards those roles. Um, because I think the you know those are the opportunities where you know if you are you know, perhaps specializing or working on those occasional ad hoc special projects, then you're more insulated for sure. But that doesn't that, that there are not aren't, aren't enough of those opportunities for everyone. So so what else is there? And so if we think about systems, we think about intelligence systems. The fact that these systems need to be designed, they need to be managed. We also need a deeper understanding of processes, especially processes that intersect one another, where we can find new opportunities and new solutions that we can create, new solutions that we can connect user needs towards. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are opportunities for us, and it's really important for those of us who are, you know, for now, in the research space and you know, perhaps some analysis and knowledge management space to really think about how we're going to lead and how we're going to shape this new future so that robots don't completely replace us. You know, find those irreplaceable functions and roles within organizations, you know, within processes. Absolutely. We can go on to the, you know, towards the, the next slide. We're going to need some feedback from, you know, from those of you in the audience. And one thing I do want to just add to that, you know, for those of you who are, you know, who are asking questions, I, I do see some coming in. We thank you for that. Keep doing that. Um, we, we will try to answer some of those on here while we can, and some of those we'll answer afterward. And also, we had, we had talked a little bit about taking leadership. And for those of you who are, you know, listening to us, whether you're you're being provoked into taking action or not, there there are, and I'll, I'll speak out just for the SLA side of things, we, you know, we, we need you. We need you in division leadership. There are openings actually at division leadership right now. 
that uh, you know some of you on the you know on this particular webinar might have an interest in doing and and, and in particular again if you're newer you know if you're more junior to the field maybe you're newer to SLA or newer to CI or uh, newer to the information profession boy we we need you probably more than we need some of the some of the older folks again to bring those new perspectives forward to, to help us understand how technology is going to have impacts and not what we should be doing and what maybe we shouldn't be doing you know what are going to be those productive paths that we can take so um, one thing I would certainly encourage people to do um, you know for those of you who have an interest in in, in taking this conversation even further then we're going to take it you know in, in this particular chapter of our conversation which there will be more of as, uh, as Cynthia already alluded to um, please step forward and uh, you know let us know and you know take on a leadership role whether that's a newsletter role a communication role a secretary role or you know whatever other openings we have um, we need you don't be uh, don't be shy about that uh, you know the field needs you we need you and, and frankly you're going to be a, a big help to your you know your colleagues out there and can I also add just maybe a little you know, personal story to you know to um, you know our, our cheerleading of the of the division. Um, I can't underscore enough how important the division has been to my own career. And it was founded 10 years ago, um, you know, and, and you know, led by Karen Razik. And we put together this core team. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. And I was newsletter editor at the time. And it was, you know, it was, it was a, a terrific role because it exposed me to a lot of practitioners and it allowed me to connect with people who you know, are you know, deeply experienced with people who are just starting out and you know, being the bridge to that. And so, um, and then throughout, um, you know, my various roles, you know, in, in uh, association, you know, volunteerism, um, I have to say that I have learned tre a tremendous amount from my colleagues. And so, you know, I think no matter what your level of experience is, um, just the ex you know, exposing yourself, you know, to people who are interested and engaged, um, you know, will inherently benefit you um, as a practitioner. Um, in, in, in addition to uh, you know, positioning you for additional leadership opportunities. So I really can't underscore that enough. Um, and so, you know, and you might think, well, you know, this is you know, kind of off topic here. It actually isn't because when we are talking about preparing ourselves for the future, it really isn't just about on-the-job preparation. Increasingly, we need to draw from other areas of interest other areas of activities to inform what we do and to be connected because in the future when we have machines um yeah machines will connect certain things digitally but it's not necessarily going to connect people in the ways that matter and intelligence bottom line is still about people and so what we can gather you know through these various interactions you know, is tremendously important, you know, towards our professional development. And I know that you know, in my role now with the Council of Competitive Intelligence Fellows, I still learn, tr learn tremendously from the people who are around me and with whom I work. Um, so I, I just want to encourage people, you know, to take advantage of the associations that you're with, you know, in, in particularly here, you know, the CI division, you know, get started, um, you know, because, you know, I, I, we know a lot of these folks, right, Craig, and, and you know, we, we've got talent to be talented people in leadership and um, and I think you'd be you know, it'd be a really great step for you to, you know to join this group and to start rubbing elbows and to you know mind meld with some of these people you know because you know they will also serve you know as your eyes and ears for future developments for to help you keep your fingers on the pulse of things because hey you know there's only so much we can do to read um, and so you know it's you know, networking is a wonderful way to crowdsource knowledge so Absolutely. So on, on your screens, everybody, you'll see that there's a couple of questions and it says CI 2020 towards a vision. Uh, and this is where we need your help. Some of you may have seen just a moment ago, I, I, I put something in our chat box to the effect that uh, this is a conversation that we're having and it's a dialogue and it's a story that, you know, that we're writing, but we're not writing it alone. We're writing it with you, the community of practitioners. And, you know, we're trying to understand what the next chapters of this particular you know, field are going to look like. So what you'll see on your screen is you're going to see uh, three questions. And, and what we'd like for you to do um, is we'd like for you to share your vision. So real simply, that, and by the way, I promise you this is not, I, I am a professor, some of you know, but uh, I promise you this is not onerous. We really want you to write two sentences. You know, number one, um, you know, what is your vision of, of a more positive future? Uh, for CI, you know, within your organization or, you know, or within your particular roles. And number two, um, what kind of role do you see yourself 
playing in that more desirable future. So real simply, what we're looking for you to do in the uh, in, in the actual chat window, if you would, because we're going to capture this, and this is something that Cynthia I and others within SLE leadership will be working on over the, the next few weeks and months, uh, especially as we uh, re, re, revisit with you guys in a number of different formats and channels over the coming months. Um, we're going to take your, you know, your, your views. We're going to do that anonymously, so please don't you worry about um, you know, us actually associating your 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 feedback with you individually. That's not going to happen. But we are looking at um, we are looking at understanding where you see this all headed, and and you know, is is that vision of a of a so-called more desirable or more attractive future uh, one that others will share or not? And that's what we're looking for. So if you could, over the next couple of minutes, while we're still talking, use that chat uh, use that chat box. Go ahead and give us two sentences. Again, number one is you know what where do you see CI going? For your organization or industry what's your vision of that more attractive future and two what do you see your role as being in that in that same future so we're going to go ahead and let you write and while we're doing that cynthia and i'll just kind of talk a little bit in the background but also give you an opportunity to put those in the chat boxes again we're going to capture that and uh, we'll be able to you know you know continue that and use that as uh, some of our longitudinal uh, research about uh, about this topic yeah, thanks, Craig. And, and I, I also want to you know, mention to our um, our audience here that this is really just no, is not an intellectual exercise at all. Um, it, what, what, because one of the first steps in understanding how we how we can prepare and what we can do to um, you know to to create new roles in the future, you know, is for us to you know, begin to define what we see and what we want. And so this exercise, you know, I see is, is really is the first step for, you know, for those, you know, who haven't thought of it yet. Um, and, and for those of you who have been thinking about this, you know, to, you know, revisit this, um, you know, as, as we, you know, continue to build on these conversations, um, you know, now and, you know, in our you know, next gathering, uh, you know, conference and, and even beyond. Um, you know, because this is something where, you know, when we're encountering, you know, rapid changes in our environment and with CI, you know, we're not aligned with just you know, a couple of you know different types of changes. We're really dealing with the entire environment. We're talking about the industry, you know, the operating environment. We're dealing with macro environmental factors, right? You know, from the standpoint of you know impacted technology as well as how information is being um, you know created and you know distributed, manipulated, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things, um, you know, need to be captured, you know, in, uh, in in how we consider our future, and uh, but we've got to start here. <clears throat> oh, absolutely, you know. Again, if we're going to make this be, it's got to start with me, as they, you know, as they say in the old, uh, you know, in the old adage. And and you know, each of us has an opportunity to make a difference for our organizations and industries. Um, there there are many things that we uniquely and, and will continue to uniquely bring to those organizations that um, that can generate benefits that that can help support the organization's ability to plan to choose to decide to take action or to develop strategy in ways that um, again are uniquely informed by the kinds of folks that we have on this particular webinar today now admittedly the body of knowledge is going to grow we're going to learn more. We're going to innovate. We're going to we're going to create. We're going to develop. We're going to make some mistakes along the way too, Cynthia. No doubt. I think all of us have mm -hmm. you know, have tried tried practices that we thought might uh, you know might bring even greater benefits, and and sometimes we stumble along the way. But you know, one of the things again that I think that you know that the newer generations do particularly well is they're resilient. They uh, they learn quickly, and, and you know, being able to learn quickly from uh, those those impediments or those barriers or, or frankly those you know those lack of successes that we have is going to be uh, pr probably key to being successful down the road. You know those who can learn faster and and apply it uh, even better uh, likely are going to have a big advantage over those who can't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely, yeah. And so um, so if we can, um, we'll we'll also just uh, mention that. We'll, we'll as, as Craig mentioned, we will be synthesizing you know, this, the, these chats, and uh, in, in January of 2019, the council you know, will uh, hold a webinar um, that will continue this conversation, exploring these additional questions. And so we're, we're chipping away at this, you know, at the various facets with each iteration. And, um, and so you know, with that, we can report out some of the results. And we'll also report out the results of, of this uh, session two, um, this webinar session, uh, at the annual conference, because we'll be doing another live session, Craig and I, um, you know, pending um, uh, the final um, 
a conference plan, but uh, we, we plan on doing another session where you know we can revisit these and again you know, dive even more deeply and, and take us into the next step of action so after you know, we've uh, we've captured some of your vision. So we can start to talk about what you know what was other specific uh, actions that we can take uh, you know, over the next you know five to ten years. And uh, so tune in. Um, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll find um, uh, the announcement for our uh, next webinar at the uh, Council Twitter feed, Twitter feed, and uh, and also our, our LinkedIn group. Um, you know, so you know, so please uh, you know keep an eye out for that as we continue this conversation with the CI division and um, you know with the council as well. And <clears throat> Um, and we want to be sure too to capture other questions and dimensions, you know, that maybe we haven't touched on as well. So I mentioned this now as Craig and I are still, you know, carrying on our conversation, so that you'll have time to consider this and submit this also via chat, uh, so that we can capture this for future discussions. Uh, because we don't we don't presume that oh that we are, you know, are uh, covering you know every single you know, um, you know critical aspect of Intel practice because as I mentioned, you know, this is vast um, and it takes time you know for us to get through it and so um, so we want to make sure that we you know, continue to register with you and you register with us um, you know, about uh, what's on your mind what's in your practice what are you facing and uh, and how you know, we can address it yeah and I see I see a lot of you already yeah jumping in with your you know with your your two sentences and thank you I'm seeing some great ones some of you might have actually uh, heard from me while Cynthia was chatting about your uh, your particular input. So we, we really appreciate that. But certainly, again, if you do have other questions or there are some areas that you, you really kind of feel like and wish we had uh, spent a little bit more time with, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, Cynthia, if you can go to the next um, the, the next slide, actually, I think that'll give them some ways of, uh, of, of actually reaching out to us. Um, we're both quite available. Um, as, as you know, SLA CID is going to be continuing to focus on this particular area over the coming uh, the coming months and, and, and certainly probably years as well. Um, we're trying to figure out what 2020 plus is going to look like and making sure that our vision of that is uh, is as clear as it as it can be, so that um, we get through that next decade in, in in even better fashion than we've gotten through the current one. So the future does remain bright for most of us, and uh, you know maybe all of us, but a lot of that's going to be based on whether we're willing to take that next step or not. So we we thank you for taking a step today and joining the webinar and for those of you who have uh, participated whether on the polls or whether you were uh, one of the many who are still answering as i'm still seeing some of these come in in the uh, q a boxes um thanks again for doing that uh, we want to stay in touch with it you want to keep in touch with it we, we certainly hope that you'll continue to uh, attend and participate in these webinars as well as join us at the annual conference Absolutely, uh, I, I think it's just tremendously important that we just remain connected um, on on all of these topics, and uh, and 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 what, what I'd like to leave with a, with a parting thought, you know, which is that. Um, we have these tools to be able to stay ahead of developments to understand where things are headed to be able to read these indicators, this is what intelligence is all about intelligence shouldn't be limited you know, towards. Just, just working on our user projects. Um, let's focus it on our own practices. In advancing those practices and understanding how we can design our practices you know, towards serving you know, current and future needs. Um, and and you know there's no there's no reason why Intel practitioners you know should be you know caught off guards. Now sometimes as, as Craig says we can be off off the mark right because in Intel you know it's 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 it's, it's, it's no, there's no guarantee. Um, however you know with iterations if we keep our eye on the ball we can keep ahead of this. It's difficult to do this, however, um, on, on our own. And so through a community like the CID, through the Council of Competitive Intelligence Fellows, and, and incidentally, we work together. The Competitive Intelligence Division and the Council actually work together as well, because again, we realize that even on our own, our, our, our organizations do not cover what the what our practices need and so we complement one another and that's really what intelligence is about it's about harnessing our networks growing harnessing building that network so that we can train our sites on where it needs to be and we can be prepared let's we've been doing this on behalf of our users let's do this on behalf of ourselves and you know our, our own uh, professional communities yeah thank you very much cynthia and craig that's this has been an amazing webinar, and I mean, 
we could discuss this all day, I'm sure. Um, and uh, I think it's valuable that we're going to be taking a look at uh, all the insights that people have provided and people have provided some great insights um, through the chat or question box, which is great. Uh, one of the things just before we go, I just wanted to uh, reiterate again, one of the things that Craig had, had mentioned was the fact that there are a number of opportunities available for the SLA CID division uh, leadership if you wanted to volunteer. We have such positions in uh, communications, membership, um, newsletter, as Cynthia had said that she is a newsletter. These are great opportunities to get involved, uh, meet some of the great people within the intelligence community and uh, get some great experience. I mean, so that's, uh, I've put into the chat box um, uh, email address for JP Radicek, who's our incoming president for SLA CID. And um, he, if you reach out to JP, he'd be able to help you out, uh, get more involved with the SLA CID, which is great experience. Um, so I wanna, again, thank everybody for attending. But I also want to thank our sponsor, Aurora WDC, and of course, Cynthia and Craig for your insights uh, on today's webinar. And I look forward to the uh, upcoming CI Fellows webinar, uh, and also, which is in January, but also there will be another SLA CID webinar in December. So stay tuned to SLA CID social media channels to uh, find out uh, more about that in the coming weeks ahead. So with that, I'd like to Again, thank everybody and hopefully you have the great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks to the audience.